Good morning. Uh, I'd like to begin by uh, th- saying it's a great honour and a privilege to have a chance to uh, address you all uh, for a few minutes this morning. I'd like to thank and congratulate Antonio and his team, not only for all of the spectacular and superb, groundbreaking, world-changing work that they do, but also for putting together such a terrific set of delegates and a, and a, a fantastic agenda, which I'm sure you'll all enjoy over the next few days. Um, I'm going to speak for a few very brief minutes this morning about the concept of trust and how it ties together Thomson Reuters, the Thomson Reuters Foundation and Reuters News. I would argue that trust is one of the fundamental issues facing humanity today. Specifically, the erosion of trust. Erosion of trust in leadership, in institutions, corporations, elections, courts, discourse and dialogue. And we, of course, face multiple converging crises today, which, left unmanaged, will further erode trust amongst communities. And we also have a number of technologies available to us that will either alleviate or exacerbate the erosion of trust. So I would argue it's a crucial moment. Trust underpins everything we do at Thomson Reuters. The Thomson Reuters Corporation, the Foundation and Reuters News. And this began in 1941, right here in London. So I'll keep the history lesson very brief. But essentially, in 1941, a number of Reuters peers and competitive news agencies across Europe and the world were being used as propaganda mechanisms for their respective governments. And the Reuters board decided to address this head-on and adopt the trust principles, which 80 years today govern everything that happens at Reuters News, at Thomson Reuters and the Foundation. And the trust principles are fivefold. The first... Reuters shall at no time pass into the hands of any one interest group or faction. Secondly, integrity, independence and freedom from bias be fully preserved at all times. Thirdly, that Reuters shall supply unbiased news services to all businesses, governments, institutions and individuals. Fourth, that Thomson Reuters shall pay due regard to the many interests which it serves. And fifth, that no effort shall be spared by Thomson Reuters so as to maintain its leading position in the international news and information business. The Thomson Reuters trust principles are governed by an independent board of directors to which we all answer. And they're in place to make sure that we adhere to these principles at all times. And it was adopted by Thomson Reuters in its entirety when we purchased Reuters in 2009. So at Thomson Reuters, in the last couple of years, how have we enacted these trust principles? Well, the first is we articulate at the start of this year our purpose as a company. The tagline is to inform the way forward. So what do we we all do for a living at Thomson Reuters? Well, firstly, we provide information, content, software to legal customers, law firms, general counsels, court systems, and so forth to help them uphold the rule of law and provide access to justice. Secondarily, we provide software and information to tax and accounting professionals to create functioning taxation systems, which is fundamental to society. Thirdly, we help catch bad actors. Our risk, fraud and compliance colleagues have an incredible track record of helping law enforcement catch and incarcerate sex traffickers, drug traffickers and fraudsters. And then last but not least, we tell the news. We report the news where it's difficult and dangerous to do so. This provides a fantastic North Star for us at Thomson Reuters, at the Foundation and at Reuters News. We also have embraced privacy. I'm very proud to say we have an impeccable track record and focus on protecting consumer and customer data. We'll stand our track record up against anyone's. We're not arrogant about it, but we're very, very proud of it. And we think it's a competitive differentiator for us going forward. Thirdly, this trust principle was very much a part of how we approach the pandemic, trusting our colleagues to work from home. And as we think about more flexible working arrangements, 
um, uh, continuing virtual for some and uh, hybrid for others. It's trust at the centre of the innovations that we're driving in terms of our work practices. As I travel the world and talk to elected officials and business leaders about Reuters news, it is one of the last standing, truly independent, fact-based news services. And it is increasingly valued as such by decision makers who want to cut through to the essence and the facts. And I would uh, uh, call out Alessandra Galoni, our editor-in-chief, and her teams, including Simon Robinson and Jane Barrett and many others, for their uh, improvements in not only our photography, uh, our video news, but also our reporting over the last couple of years. And then last but not least, I believe that Thomson Reuters will be the first company to truly unlock AI and machine learning for the benefit of professionals, to make their lives better, more productive, and ultimately more impactful. And we'll do this with the trust principles uh, at the very, very centre of everything we do. Now, to our, uh, Antonio does a much better job of explaining the foundation and the application of the trust principles uh, than I do in his uh, Italian-British uh, intonation. But as we say in Australia, the foundation attacks the hard stuff, the most complicated issues, the ones that require bravery and resilience, that require increasing harnessing of technologies, require putting together facts and transparency where it's difficult and dangerous to do so and where there are multiple competing vested interests. So again, I applaud the work that the Foundation does in leveraging its expertise in journalism and law to drive inclusive economies, media freedom and human rights. And as Antonio says, the Foundation connects Thomson Reuters clients, colleagues and communities and leverages their knowledge and expertise to address some of the most critical issues of our time with the goal of fostering free, fair and informed societies. Our shared stakeholders include legal practitioners, civil society, policy makers, media organisations and media freedom organisations, many of whom are represented here today and thank you for being here, and of course journalists and the private sector. We're very proud of our track record of, of the application of trust and the trust principles and data privacy. And we're proud of our association, not only with the foundation, but the trust conference. So again, thank you all for being here today. And I know you're looking forward as much as I am to hearing from Dmitry Muratov. Thanks everybody.